Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and in today's video I'm going to show you how I created my first set of cards using the November 2020 sheet load of cards. I hope you'll stick around, get a couple tips along the way, and see how I made them. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel and you are going to be interested in downloading the free printable, make sure to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Yesterday was the first of the month, which means it was time for me to share my newest sheet load of cards. If you're new to my channel or new to sheet load of cards, this is a free printable that I put out each month here on my YouTube channel that tells you what supplies you need and how to cut your paper to make the most of it and get as many cards as you can. If you follow the supply list and the cutting guides for November 2020, you're going to end up with six cards from just three six by six pattern papers and some cardstock. If you want to see a close-up of each of the cards, make sure to check out yesterday's video. And in that video as well, I tell you how to download the file for free if you're a subscriber to my channel. I will have it linked below and at the end of this video. Also linked below are each of my collaborators. They will be sharing their first set of cards on either their YouTube channel, blog, or Instagram account. So make sure to click on all those links below and go see what they made and leave them some love. November 2020 does use six by six pattern paper. Normally around here, the sheet load uses 12 by 12, but I know that a couple months ago when I shared a six by six special edition, you loved it, so I decided to try another one. Before I start today, I will talk a little bit about the supplies I'll be using, and then I'll go to the process and a voiceover. If I leave you with any questions, make sure to leave those in the comment section below, and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. I will, of course, be using the November 2020 sheet load of cards, and like I mentioned before, this is a free printable for my subscribers. For my pattern papers, I pre-selected three pieces from Simple Stories Summer Fresh 6x6 paper pad. Now this is an older paper pad, I think it said copyright 2012, but the great thing about sheet load is you can use it with your new supplies or the supplies that you've been hanging on to for just the right project. For my sentiments today, I'll be using Pretty Pink Posh's Encouraging Greetings. I am definitely going to be using Sending You Smiles Across the Miles, and I might also use the You Make Me Smile. I need some cards to send out to subscribers who send me cards, so I thought those would be good sentiments to pass along. I will be stamping my sentiments today in Stampin' Up's Cherry Cobbler because I thought that went well with the red coordinating cardstock I chose for the cards. For the cardstock, you need two pieces of eight and a half by 11 in a color. You need one piece of eight and a half by 11 for what you're gonna stamp your sentiment on. And then you need three more pieces of eight and a half by 11 to cut and fold into card bases. I decided that since the sketch has quite a bit of white space on the front that I'm going to try to emboss my card front and I chose this Cuddlebug Honeycomb Embossing Folder. Let's get crafty! To get started today, I'm going to be cutting down each of my pattern papers. The first thing I do is cut this into two strips. The first one is as tall as pieces A and B and the second one is as tall as piece C. Once I have those two strips cut down, then I'm going to go ahead and put those back in my trimmer the opposite way and cut those to the widths of each of the dimensions given. Again, today I won't go over a lot of those dimensions because the cutting guide does give those. I follow this same process until I have all three pieces of the pattern paper cut to size and each of these does end up with a little strip left over at the bottom so I do set that to the side and I hope to be back later this month with a sheet load leftovers feature. 
For my CS1 today, I'm going to be cutting it slightly different than what the diagram shows. Just for consistency, I did go ahead and set up the cutting guide so you would just get three from each sheet. But if you cut these correctly, you can end up getting four from each sheet. What I did is cut two strips that were four and a half inches tall from the first piece of cardstock and then one four and a half inch tall strip from that second piece. Then I cut these down to the final size until I ended up with six of the red cardstock mats. For now, I'm going to skip cutting CS2 because later I will just be using some scraps for this. What I'm going to do now though is cut down each of my pieces of cardstock for my card bases and I chose just an off white today. I cut these in half to four and a quarter inches wide and then I'm going to get out my We Are Memory Keepers trim and scoreboard. Normally I wouldn't score this cardstock because it is pretty lightweight and does fold nicely. But because of my next step, which is using the embossing folder, I did want a score line so I knew how far into the cardstock to place my embossing folder. Because there is a pretty good size white border around my pattern paper piece that I'm going to put on there later, I did want to add some extra texture to the front of the card. This is where I'll be using that honeycomb embossing folder. Now this is a larger embossing folder, 5x7, and I chose this one because I like the pattern and it would fill that card front completely. I do take a little bit of time making sure that I line up the end of the pattern on the embossing folder with that score line that I just made. Once I have that set and centered in there nicely, I hold that tightly while I run it through my cuddle bug. And here's a close up look at what that looks like. I just love the texture that it gives this piece. I continue this same process until all six of the card fronts are embossed. Next, I'm going to be doing some die cutting for my sentiment. And even though the original sketch doesn't call for it, I will be putting a scallop circle red cardstock mat behind each of my stamped circles. One of the great things about sheet load is you can jazz it up as much or as little as you want. Originally, I was just going to send the circles through with that off white cardstock, but because I cut those scraps so close to the size of the circle, I did go ahead and bring in my Scotch blue removable tape, and I will be able to use this one piece for all of my die cutting for these cards, and I actually set it to the side so I can use it again later. I just love that Scotch blue removable tape, how it allows it to stay in place while you're die cutting, and then when you remove it, it does does not harm your cardstock or your pattern paper in any way. I continued cutting circles and scallop circles until I had six of each. Now it's time to do some stamping. I went ahead and selected the first stamp and this one says sending you smiles across the miles. And you might have noticed there that I was kind of tapping my fingers on the stamp before I inked it up. That's because this is a new stamp and hasn't been used. So it sometimes will take off that manufacturing oil or whatever that would keep the ink from sticking. I also did test it the first time on a post-it note to make sure everything was gonna stamp nicely. Then I re-inked it and stamped it in the center of my die cut circle. I stamped three with this sentiment and then I chose you make me smile for the remaining circles. I thought that both of these sentiments would be great for when I send cards to subscribers. I do usually like to send out a little kind of thank you for thinking of me card when people send in either just a just because card for me or they send in cards for the show us your sheet load. If you're ever interested in sending me a card, I would love it. I love to go to the post office box and have something to get out of there. My address is always in the description box. Here's a look at the stamp sentiments.
Once those were all stamped, I matted each of them with those scalloped red cardstock circles. I want to keep these cards nice and flat so they'll go through the mail easily. Now it's time to put together the pattern papers that I'll be placing on each of my card fronts. I go through and I pull one piece from each of the patterns and the way that I pull these, it does ensure that no card will look the same for this set of cards. You'll notice the first time I have the green and red on the top and the next time I have the green and floral on the top. Then you just choose that remaining third piece that isn't already represented on the top. I put all of these together until I have matched up all of my pattern paper. And now we can start adhering the pattern paper to the red cardstock mat. For this, you might want to have your printout in front of you to give you an idea of what kind of border you want to leave on the outside of the cardstock. I put adhesive on the back of that first floral piece and you'll see here that I do go ahead and pull in my sheet load of cards just to make sure that border is similar. When I go to place the second piece over on the right, once that adhesive is on there, I try to make sure that I have the same border on the top and right sides and this should leave you with about the same amount between those two pattern paper pieces. Finally, you're going to put adhesive on that third piece that goes at the bottom and I just tried to center this in the area that was left. Now I will tell you later on I started adhering the piece at the bottom first and that gave me a good idea of the left and right centering of that. But don't worry if it's not exactly on, the middle is always going to be covered up by the sentiment circle. While I finish this, I do want to remind you that if you would like to create a sheet load and share it with us online, that you use the hashtags for this month. The first one is hashtag S-U-Y-S-N-O-V 2020. And then as always, hashtag show us your sheet load. I look for these hashtags both here on YouTube and over on Instagram. If you want to send in a card, I will link the show us your sheet load video in the description box below that gives you all the details on how you can do that. Once those were all put together, I then started placing these onto my card fronts. All I did was add adhesive to the back and these got adhered flat down to the center. Again, I'm trying to keep these nice and flat for easy mailing. Once those were all on there, I pulled back in those matted sentiments and I started getting those placed on the cards. If I were going to hand these out instead of mailing, I probably would have put these on with foam tape. But again, I just added that ATG adhesive to the back and it got placed onto the card front. Once those were all in place, it was time to add a little sparkle to some of the cards. I thought below the you make me smile sentiments, there was a little too much white space. So I pulled in my transparent and silver glitter dots from Elizabeth Craft Designs and I placed three of those below the word smile. On this first one, I chose three that were the same size to go there. And you'll notice here in a little bit when I do the second one, I place a larger one in the center and two smaller ones on either side. Again, these are a nice flat embellishment that add a lot of sparkle. Unfortunately, these are out of stock right now on the site I buy them from, but I do have a link in the description box below in case you want to go ahead and get on the mailing list to be notified when they're back in stock. And here's a little look at the finished cards. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made today's card set. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Now don't forget to go visit all of my collaborators. Their YouTube channels, blogs, and Instagram accounts are all linked in the description box below. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.